shall we tell the audience what bromitotic division is? Certainly. Very well then. Can I please draw your attention to the slide? The nuclear membrane remains intact throughout cell division. In prophase the nucleus elongates and becomes dumbbell shaped. In early metaphase the nucleolus stretches and divides into two polar masses with the equatorial plate between them. Anaphase has the appearance of a large interzonal body form. And, finally the elongated nucleus separates into daughter nuclei. Alright, now let us talk about the interaction of this pathogen within the host. From that earlier flash across the screen, we can see that this amoeba exhibits remarkable feeding cups, which are cytoplasmic extensions. It enters the cranial cavity through the olfactory nerve in order to feed on the neurons of the host's brain. Once inside the area of the brain, they release several enzymes that allow it to dissolve host's tissue. Then, its surface proteins allow it to cut a hole in the covering of the neuron cell. That does not sound too comfortable at all. Is there a way that our body's immunity can protect us from this nasty little thing? I am afraid not. Parasites exhibit a number of mechanisms that allow them to evade host immune responses. And two such mechanisms are displayed in the Negleria fowlery. Ah yes. Masking and variation. Please do tell us about it, Lucy my dear. In masking, the amoebae becomes coated with the host's components and it is not recognized as being foreign. Then, with variation the surface antigens of the amoeba change during the course of infection. Which makes this thing rather tricky to get a hold of. Also, these tricky little amoebas are able to internalize the antibodies of the immune system. Along with having surface proteins that prevent attachment of complement proteins. The amoeba collects the proteins into one area of its membrane. And finally, this membrane can be shed and act as a decoy to attract other complement proteins that would otherwise attack the amoeba. Now, the principles are similar with this amoeba as with other amoebic life. It is heterotrophic and obtains its energy by phagocytosis, engulfing particles of food. The engulfed particles are encased in a food vacuole that combines with a membrane sac called a lysosome. The food is then digested and converted into nutrients and energy for the amoeba. It maintains osmotic composition with the use of contractile vacuoles. Waste is also excreted through a contractile vacuole. Lastly, it is anaerobic and aerotolerant. However, it is not tolerant of salt water and cannot be found in oceanic locations. It is estimated that in Florida, there are more than 100 million exposures to the parasite for every case of primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. Most adults in the United States appear to have been exposed to the parasite as evidenced by the presence of antibodies against this pathogen. The factors that lead to infection in the tiny minority of exposed individuals are still unknown. In working on the Negleria project, our team stumbled across some old footage from the early 60s of the National Department of Being Safe. It is a message about the Negleria Fowlery and water safety. Therefore, we thought it prudent to air this as part of our report. Please, listen, closely. The Public Television Network. What do you mean on? Is the film rolling? Hello boys and girls. My name is Dr. Eater Offen. Today we are here to discuss the Negleria Fowlery, also known as the brain-eating amoeba. This amoeba is commonly found in bodies of warm fresh water, such as lakes and rivers. In humans, Negleria fowlery invades the central nervous system via the nose. Specifically, 
through the olfactory mucosa of the nasal tissues. The penetration initially results in significant necrosis of and hemorrhaging of the olfactory bulbs. From there, amoebae climb along nerve fibers through the floor of the cranium via the cryobreform plate and into the brain cavity. Once in the brain, it then becomes pathogenic, causing primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. The amoeba grows best in warm or hot water. Most commonly they may be found in bodies of warm fresh water such as lakes or rivers, geothermal sources such as hot springs, warm water discharge from industry and poorly maintained and minimally chlorinated or non-chlorinated swimming pools and soil. Not found in salt water locations. Primary amoebic meningoencephalitis is a syndrome affecting the central nervous system, characterized by changes in olfactory perception, taste and smell, followed by vomiting, nausea, fever, headache, and the rapid onset of coma and death within two weeks. It usually occurs in healthy children and young adults with no prior history of immune compromise who have recently been exposed to bodies of fresh water. What was that all about? Would someone please run the bloody archive reel from the Center for Disease Control? The only known way to prevent infection from Negleria fowleri is to refrain from water-related activities. However, some measures that might reduce risk by limiting the chance of contaminated water getting into the nasal passages include, well, it is getting late, and I must be off. Although the attack upon the human nervous system rarely occurs, such infections will nearly always result in the death of the victim. Therefore, one must avoid water-related activities in bodies of warm fresh water, hot springs, and thermally polluted areas such as water around power plants. Avoid water-related activities in warm fresh water during periods of high water temperature and low water levels. Hold the nose shut or use nose clips when taking part in water-related activities in bodies of warm fresh water such as lakes, rivers, or hot springs. Finally, avoid digging in or stirring up the sediment while taking part in water-related activities in shallow, warm freshwater areas. Also, it would appear that saltwater locations, like the ocean are inhospitable for proliferation of Negleria fowlery. This has been a public message from the National Department of Being Safe. There are many factors contributing to it as a pathogen. However, even though it has been investigated by researchers, no one has been able to pinpoint the exact enzyme. But, several enzymes have been proposed in its virulence. Phospholipase A. Sphingomyelinos. 56K DAA cysteine proteinase. However, studies on the functional aspects of these enzymes in Negleria need to be carried out further to verify if they are related to the amoeba's pathogenesis. On behalf of Mr. Daniel Ferranti, and us at Go Simpleton Tech, we would like to thank you for watching this presentation on the Nagleria Fowler, the brain-eating amoeba.